Okay, so we've taken care of the conjugate, we've taken care of the negative. What's the next one we've had a go, got to go, have a look at here? Okay, so iz, what does iz do? Well, let's think about the uh, arithmetic first in rectangle form, and then we'll think about the geometry. So um, here comes my diagram. And when we take, have a look at the, uh, the actual arithmetic here, right? Multiplying through by i, so this is i, z that I'm calculating, we started off with one take away root three i. So when I multiply i by one take away root three i, let's just do the number crunching. So you're getting i take away root three i squared. So you can see this uh, root three i squared, this is just gonna become negative root three, um, and then you're taking away negative root three, so watch out for that double negative. That gives you root three plus i, so I've got them in the right order. Now what does that look like? Where is that? Well, you can see if I compare that to the original z that I've got, um, you're going to be going, uh, you know, I said that, uh, let's go back with this color. If this is one over here, then two I guess would be here, and root three is about 1.7. Um, in addition to that, I've got this up here as one, so if that's my vertical distance, and then this root three-ish is gonna be my horizontal distance, then root three plus i will be about there. There we go, right there, I, Z. So ringing a bell, hopefully, that actually what we've got here is a rotation through pi onto radians anti-clockwise. We have gone from down below up to here, right? And that's what's given us this coordinate up the top, right? So therefore, um, what can I say about the relationship between these, uh, these moduli and these arguments? Well, Yet again, the modulus is unchanged. You, get, you can see this rotation around the origin um, hasn't changed the distances or the lengths along the hypotenuse of these right angle triangles. So I'm gonna say iz is still gonna start with a two. And then when I say, okay, what will the uh, argument be? What will be the theta? Uh, in this case, you're gonna say, oh, I, I started down here at negative pi on three, but then I'm going to add pi on two, which gets me all the way into the first quadrant. So I'll write this out in long form first. So I've got cos of uh, negative pi on three plus pi on two plus i sine of negative pi on three plus pi on two. And hopefully you can confirm for yourself either by right angle triangle trig in, in this triangle over here, um, or just by doing you know, this combination of fractions by getting common denominators. Hopefully you can convince yourself that this is gonna be pi on six plus i sine pi on six. So you can see here again, trying to generalize, right? What happens when you compare z with iz? Well, the modulus doesn't change, it's still gonna be r, but what you're gonna have is cos of your whatever angle, whatever angle you started with, and you're gonna add pi on two, and then you're going to do the same with sine theta plus pi on two. That, that plus pi on two, highlight it like so, th that is the thing that you get from multiplying by i, nothing else changes. Okay, so I hope your brain is going all right so far. Uh, we're on the home stretch for this particular question. So it says uh, z squared, and then it goes z to the power of negative one. So let's, um, let's tackle each of these in turn and, and sort of together because you can see, um, unlike these guys, where you're just sort of, you're multiplying by i, you're multiplying by negative one, um, all these kinds of things here are not changing the size of what's going on. But you'll see for part e and part f, there is gonna be a difference. So, uh, let's paste it again for good measure. Uh, F is asking for Z squared. So just like before, what I'm gonna do is we'll think about the rectangular form first, go ahead and simplify, and then see what we can then glean out of that for the geometry for what's happening. So I've got one take away root three i, and that's been squared. So I'm just gonna expand this out, see what happens, right? So I'm gonna get, uh, this is like, you know, in, uh, a plus b all squared form. So you can see I'm gonna start with one squared, which is one. Um, I'm gonna do my plus two ab, which in this case is minus two root three i. And then I'm gonna add my b squared, but just be careful because your b squared is going to be, uh, let's see here, root three squared and i squared. So I'll write that as root three i all squared. Uh, you can see that along the end here, right, that root three will square up into three, and the i will square up into negative one. So in fact, you're going to have one take away two root three i 
take away three. So minus two, minus two root three i is my summary. So where is this? Well, um, I've made my uh, axes a little bit small, but I think we can just fit it there, right? Uh, we're gonna go first to the left, two units. So there goes negative one, there goes negative two like so, and then negative two root three, we've already established that uh, root three is about 1.7, so uh, two root three would be at 3.4. So I'm guessing if this is one, this is two, this is three, so 3.4 is around here. So I'm gonna draw it about that spot. So let's go down to, what did I just say? Um, I lost my, my scale. So that's one, that's two, that's three, so 3.4 about there. Okay, I better keep an eye on that so I don't lose it. Okay, so there is where I'm eyeballing that, okay. So let's go ahead and make that a little bit straighter. There we go, all right. So here, this number, uh, this point I should say that I've put down the bottom, this is z squared. Now, what's going on here? Well, hopefully you can see, um, for starters, this thing is bigger. Um, unlike the moduli that we were having a look at before, all the r's were still two, right? This moduli, uh, modulus was two, so was this one, uh, so was this one, and of course the original one was two. But here, like just by virtue of my diagram, you can see it's longer than two. How much longer is it? Well, if you have a think about it this way, what you've got here is in fact, and I might even color it just so you can see what's going on. Let's make this a little bit thinner because it's gonna be very thick. This triangle over here, that you can see in the third quadrant. Hopefully you can see, number one, by its coordinates and also just by the fact that I've, I've drawn it reasonably well, um, you can see that it is actually a similar triangle to the one that we started over here with in the fourth quadrant. Can you see it's just a bigger version and it's been uh, you know, flipped over? So being that it's similar, um, I can use its proportions, its ratios to work out the sizes of my sides. You can see this length here is exactly double over this one and this Vertical length here is also double compared to this one, we, two root three versus root three. So therefore the hypotenuse is also going to be doubled. Um, you can see that that means we're gonna go from two up to four. So this is my new uh, modulus, and of course you could have worked that out by Pythagoras in this orange triangle if you like. Um, but for now let's just jot that down. The modulus of z squared will be four. And then what about the angle? Well, you can also see that I've got a similar situation happening um, as we did up here, right? In terms of how the angles all relate to each other, the things that are supplementary and so on. So you can see I've got a negative pi on three here, which means that um, I'll also have pi on three here. But because the argument of this z squared down here starts from the positive side of the real axis, I'm going to need another color here, maybe purple will stand out. I've got to start from the positive side of the real axis and then rotate around until I get to um, that, that interval that points me at z squared, right? So therefore, since this is pi on 3, this over here is going to be negative 2 pi on 3. That's going to be the angle um, that I have there negative two pi on three when I keep its direction in mind. So therefore I can say arg z will be negative two pi on three. So now I'm ready to put it all together and write it as a mod arg form. So z squared equals, here comes four, that's my new argument. Sorry, my new modulus, all the words flying around. And then here comes cos, this is the argument, uh, negative two pi on three plus i sine negative two pi on Three. Okay, so there's z squared. Now you can see what's going on here is that because we're multiplying by this uh, number by itself, you know, this action here, when we said we multiply by um, a number with a real component and an imaginary component, the real component scales, right? So that's why this is twice as far away. And then the imaginary component rotates, which is why you can see I go through this negative pi on three. Well, when you multiply a second time, you're scaling up by a factor of two again. So that's why you're, you're at four. Presumably if I did it again, you'd be eight and then 16 and so on. And also because I'm multiplying by an imaginary component again, I multiply by, um, I rotate rather by pi on three radians here, and then I rotate another pi on three radians, you can see here, right? So this negative two pi on three is made up of two pieces. There's the first pi on three, and then there's the second pi on three, and it's all negative because you're heading in the uh, clockwise direction. Okay, last one, let's have a go at part G. What's being asked for is z to the power of negative one, which of course we can think of as one over z. All right, we'll just have our diagram here on standby. We're gonna to come to it shortly, but let's work out things in Cartesian form, in rectangular form, and see what insights that can yield for us. 
Now, I already have my z defined as one take away root three i. Of course, I don't really want to divide through by a complex uh, denominator. So as we've seen before, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, um, which is going to realize my denominator. And uh, that's going to give me something nice and much easier to deal with. So what do we get on the numerator? Of course, that's just going to be 1 plus root 3i. And then on the denominator, we've got a difference of squares thing happening here. So this is going to be 1 squared take away root 3i squared. Um, of course, we're about to get a double negative, but we're, we're a bit ahead of ourselves, right? So I've got 1 plus root 3i on the top. And then I've got uh, 1 plus, because I've got that take away i squared, and then that root 3 squared just gives me 3. So I'm getting 1 plus root 3i all divided by 4. Okay, so wh where is this thing going to be? Well, let's have a look over here. Um, if I start to look here and zoom in real, 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 real close, right? Um, a quarter is going to be, well, if this is 1, then I can say here's a half uh, and here's a quarter. So things are getting real small, okay? So I will just label that guy as a quarter. Um, and then we said, okay, well, if this distance here is root three, then uh, root three over four, which is going to be my imaginary component, as you can see here, uh, that's going to be, well, it's if I had root three being this tall before, it's gonna be, let's, uh, let's do this. So if that's root, root three, or negative root three, I should say, there's about half and there's about a quarter. So let's put that at the same spot up here. Oh no, I'll stay with the same color. So there it is there, and we'll draw the dotted lines just for the sake of completeness. That's gonna be one over z, which is actually z to the negative one. That's the way the question got phrased to us in the first place. Okay, so what's going on here? This teeny little complex number. What is happening? Well, um, if we think back to uh, z squared, which we just did, right? Z squared is take Z and then do it again, right? So, you know, you, you scaled by a factor of two. You got twice as far from the origin. So you went from two to four. And uh, you rotated around um, another time. So previously you went negative pi on three. So now we go negative two pi on three, right? So it goes another pi on three radians in the clockwise direction. That's for multiplication. But if you're doing division, then everything is reversed. So you can see that instead of going up by a factor of two, you're going to, you know, here comes two, then four, you're actually gonna go backwards, right? So you can see things have gone off in the other direction and they're not twice as big, they're twice as small. We can confirm that just by thinking about what's going on with mod arg form here, right? If I say to myself, Oh, okay, what is the modulus here? Well, um, the modulus of z by Pythagoras um, equals the square root of um, a, which in this case is a quarter, squared, there's a squared plus b squared, which is root three on four squared. So just simplifying this out, you can see I'm gonna get uh, one over 16 plus three over 16 underneath my square root. So that's going to be the square root of four over 16. That's the square root of a quarter. Um, and that's going to be well defined as a half because don't forget we're in, we're in positive, we're in real numbers here because the modulus is just the length. So that, uh, length of a half corresponds to the fact that, you know, here this length tells you instead of getting twice as big, you're getting twice as small. And then what's happening with the rotation? Like the real part tells you about scale, so we've just dealt with that. Um, the imaginary part de deals with rotation. Well, we've already seen this same argument before. Um, does it look familiar? All the way from this guy here, right? Um, it's, the, it's the same rotation that we've gone up in this direction, it's just that I'm a bit smaller. I don't go all the way up to the conjugate of z. So in fact, this is just a small uh, scaled down version of the conjugate of z, if you like. Um, you can see that. Um, I'm going in the opposite direction over here because instead of going pi on three clockwise, I'm gonna go pi on three anti-clockwise, which is positive, right? So therefore, I can combine my modules here, which is a half, with my uh, argument, argument of z, uh, this z, by the way, it's um, z to the negative one is what I should say, because this is the original number. So let's write that as negative one, and this guy here is also negative one. So when I work out the argument of z to the negative one, it's just going in the opposite direction, right? Because instead of uh, you know, doing it again, which is multiplying through, I'm dividing, which is going backwards. So therefore, it's gonna be positive pi on three uh, 
double negative there. So therefore, z to the power of negative one is going to be, here comes my new modulus, and then here comes um, cos of pi on three plus i sine pi on three. So you can see what's going on here is that you're undoing, you're getting smaller and rotating clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. Uh, that's what one over z does. So hopefully you can see, um, doing these questions and also having the visual alongside is very, very instructive. It gives you insight as to what's actually happening. So even when you are not required to draw, I encourage you to get an argand diagram down so that you can clearly see the relationships visually.